Hello, this is Lawrence of Silicon Valley High School and we are continuing a video series, video tutorial series about event handling techniques. For this video, we will try to complete our GUI application, our simple calculator that we've started um, in Unit 5.1 about uh, the discussion on GUI. So in this current code that we have, we have imported the AWT package. We have declared the containers and the components. And I've created a constructor for the class called Simple Calculator. And I've instantiated each container and component that we will be using for our that we will be using for our um, calculator. Also, inside our method launch frame, this is a method, a user-defined method, where we try to assemble all of our containers and components all together, and then setting the visibility to true so that we can view our calculator. As of the moment, this is what we have. So let's try to run our calculator. So you have a frame. You have three labels on the left, three text fields on the right, having zeros as their initial values. And if we try to change those values and click any of the buttons, nothing yet will happen. Because as of this moment, our code only have um, GUI um, codes or codes that can launch user interfaces. So we can even close our frame. So what I'll do for now is I'm going to press Control C in our terminal window. So if you're trying to trying to run this in in Eclipse or NetBeans, you can also terminate the application by clicking on the stop button in your uh, IDE. In our uh, previous videos, we've also talked about event handling techniques. We can include the event handlers within the class or outside the class or we can also do inner classes or anonymous classes okay so what we'll do is first we need to add an a package in our import statement so i'll add java.awt.events or event package so that i will be able to use an interface called action listener so i'll say implements action listener now action listeners are used so that we can gain an interaction on all of the five buttons the button add subtract multi, button div and button clear all of these are clickable buttons so i'll be using action listener for that also based on our api if we implement the action listener we're supposed to override A method called public void action performed performed that accepts an action event object now the action performed is called our event handler all right so we get to code how we would like our user our application to interact for every button that is being pressed now, since we have five possible buttons, we have the buttons add, sub, mul, div, and clear. We need to be able to know which button was clicked. So I have an action event object. The variable is called AE. There's a method called get source that will determine which button was clicked. Oops. So I'm going to assign that to the object variable called source. All right, so let me just save this for a while. Okay, now we also need to have an if condition. This if condition will check because let's try to review our um, UI. Okay, we need to check if these text fields 
actually have values in them because it's always possible for your text field to have no value at all. So we need to check first if text field 1 has a value. And in order for us to do that, we say tf1, our text field, we have a method called get text, And we need to test if it's not equal to null. And we're going to do the same for text field 2. Dot get text, okay, not equal to null. So basically, this condition here will test if our text fields 1 and 2 have values in them. If they do have values, of course, there are several other tests that you can perform. You can test if the values that they have are numbers or letters. Of course, they should only contain numbers. So putting letters should also pr uh, provide us with an exception um, handling technique. Okay, we should do that. But to keep things simple in our um, application, let's provide a simple test, testing if our text fields only have values in them. All right. Now, this one will be true if both of them have values inside their text fields. After that, we need to get the text from text field 1, so calling the getter, tf1.getText, we need to get the value and assign it to a variable. So what we'll do next is we're going to declare a local variable. Let's define them as double, call them num1, num2, and result having a value of 0. So whenever you perform interactions to any text components, Let's say, may it be a text field or may it be a text area. Whenever you get the text from these text components, the return values are strings. So in order for us to assign them properly to num1, we need to perform double.parse, double, string to double conversion. So whatever value that you're going to get from text field will be converted to a double value and stored to num1. We're going to do the same for num2. Double.parse, double, tf2 double, get text and store it to num2. Alright, as of this moment, you already have values for num1 and num2. Both of them are double values. Okay, so let's, the, the reason why we chose double, so to keep things simple for now, of course, people can, uh, a user can always enter an integer value Okay, but uh, integers can also be uh, placed inside a double. So after getting their double value equivalent, we can now test for the value of source. If source is equal to button add, meaning um, did we click on the add button? If the add button was clicked, Okay, what we'll do is we're going to get the value of result, okay, say num1 plus num2. Else, if, okay, so else if, if source is equal to button sub, if it's a sub, if you click on the sub button, we say result, is equal to num1 minus num2. Now, let me do a quick copy-paste here so, so that we will save some time. All right. So, sub mole div and... I'll do a divide here and clear. So whenever we click on the clear button, we would like to reset all of these text fields back to zero. So in order for us to place a value in our text fields, we say tf1.setText. Okay. Now, 
as I've mentioned earlier, whenever we get a text from a text field, we're getting a string. Same thing is true when you're about to set a value to them. So if you want to set a value to them, you need to set them as a string value as well. So let me do a quick copy, paste, paste. All right. So for text field 1, text field 2, and text field, field 3, we're resetting them to 0 if in case you click on the clear button right here. All right. And then, of course, the last else is essentially do nothing. All right. Now, after you're, you've gone through the series of if, else, if ladder here, at the end of the entire if, else, if ladder, result will definitely have a value. So the next thing that we need to do is to put the value of result inside text field number three. And to do that, we say tf3.setText, and then we put result. Unfortunately, result has a data type of double, which means this will not work because result is not yet a string value. So there are several ways on how to do this. You can use string that value of, or a simple version would probably uh, um, will probably be better. You can concatenate result to an empty string. And this will automatically convert your string double value to uh, your result double value to a string version so that you can set it to text field number three. All right. Now, essentially, this is what your event handler looks like for our calculator. But as of now, this is not yet working because we have created the event handler. So the next thing that we need to do is to register them to our UI component. So let's do the registration. Register our event handlers. Okay, so where would you like us to put our event handlers? We would like to register them to our clickable components here, to our buttons. And there are five buttons. So let's start with button add. Dot, to register it, we say add, and then... Pull out the name of the interface that you're using, copy, and paste it right here. So we say add action listener. All right. Next, what value should we pass inside our add action listener? Since our event handlers are within the same class, we need to pass the current object. And the current object's name is this. Okay. If our event handler is located outside, you simply pass the instance of that other class. Okay, so I'll do a quick copy paste here. So for button add, button sub, button mole, div, and clear. Okay, so let's try this out. Save. Let me cancel this. Compile, recompile our calculator. Oops, I forgot to have a semicolon in my import statement. There you go. All right, save it again. Compile. All right, perfect. And let's run our code. So let's try to put some values in this text field. Let's say 123, and then let's say second value is 5. If we click on plus, that's 128 minus 118 times divide and clear. So there now, our buttons are all working properly. Of course, we still need to code another event handler for our, clo for our close button in our frame. Okay, so there are two ways, based on our last video, there are two ways on how to deal with that. We can either use, let's check the API, AWT event. We can either use a window listener. If we do that, we're supposed to override 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven methods. But I only need one. So I could also opt to use extending an adapter class called window adapter so that I will only override the method that I need. And one of the ways to do that is by creating an inner class. So this is my event, also an event handler. So I'll create a class called private class, my close button handler, which extends window adapter. Notice I'm extending an adapter class, which means it's an abstract class. And with this, I am only, I can only write a method. Uh, I can only override the method that I need. So I'll override, what's the name of that method? Window closing window event. Public void window closing that accepts a window event event from spelling object. All right. And what would you like us to do inside window closing? Terminate the virtual machine. So we'll type system.exit0. Right? So again, this is our second event handler, but that event handler is within this within the class called my close button handler. So we need to register this, this time not to a button, but to our frame. Our frame's name is F. So I'll say F, where's that? Here f.add window listener you don't use listener you don't use add window adapter you use the listener version so you say add window listener and then we don't say this because our event handler window closing is inside another class so we need to copy that and call the instance of that class by calling the constructor new and then paste my close button handler parenthesis there we go all right so let's try to save this and recompile our calculator and run our calculator so let's try to put some values in them 101 let's say 22 plus minus times divide and clear and if we press the close button it closes perfect let's try to run that again this time if you're using windows you may try to use alt f4 or if you're using mac you can press command q so command q is equivalent to uh, closing the frame so that's it for now so what we did in our code, we've implemented action listener because we're using buttons as our event handler. So we need to import both AWT and AWT event within the same class. And then we write our event handlers. In this example, we have two versions, our event handler within the same method, uh, sorry, within the same class, and an e within an inner class called close button handler. So this is what we call our inner class. After writing our event handlers, the next step is for us to register all of them. In this example, our action listener, uh, our action performed event handler was registered to all of the five buttons while the window closing event handler was registered to our frame. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. In the next video, we will convert this AWT version to a swing version and then we'll try to create an executable jar file. See you in our next video. Happy coding!